Jeep unveiled the long-awaited Hurricane inline six engines at the New York Auto Show for the Wagoneer models just recently. As one of the worst kept secrets of the last few years, we all know these engines will eventually be in everything from Challengers to Durangos to Ram 1500s. And the question is, are these new engines better than the legendary Hemi V8? Are the Hurricanes a marketing gimmick? Or are they truly worthy of replacing the 5.7, 392, and the 6.2? Solanus claims these engines are 15% more efficient, more powerful, and will bring that extra one to two miles per gallon that everyone's been craving for. Yes, well, that's, uh, that's a very, very interesting theory. I have a simpler one. You're all not worthy. <laughs> the long-awaited Hurricane or GME T6 or whatever you want to call these engines will come in two versions for now. A standard output version with 420 horsepower and 468 foot-pounds of torque for the Wagoneer at 22 PSI and a high output with 5 to 10 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque for the Grand Wagoneer at 26 PSI. When I talk about these engines in this video, I'm only going to reference the numbers that we see for the Wagoneer. We'll have to wait and see how Dodge will tune these engines when they find a way into the Challenger and the Charger. There is a third hybrid Hurricane version that'll come later, and I'll talk about that one as well. But before I get started with the slight improvements, I gotta ask this question. Why is the Hurricane 510 a 2K option over the 392? If I look at the F-150 Platinum, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is only a $750 upgrade for the same horsepower, but 90 more foot-pounds of torque. Keep in mind, the EcoBoost also has two turbochargers, two cylinder heads, two head gases. Essentially, it is a V8 with two cylinders chopped off. The Hurricane 510 delivers 40 more horsepower and only 50 more foot-pounds of torque over the 302 for 2K. But why? It's cheaper to manufacture, has one cylinder head, one head gasket, one fuel rail, but you get the point that it's using less parts, the same number of turbochargers as the EcoBoost, delivers around the same amount of total power, and costs $2,000 more than the 392. And Solana's own words on their press release, all Hurricanes share the same design, bore, stroke, and cylinder spacing. So the inline four with one turbo in the Wrangler is cheaper than a Pentastar, but then they add two cylinders, one turbo for these new Hurricanes, and now all of a sudden the 510 is more expensive than a 392. Why is the engine designed to be built cheaper, more expensive? But I already know the answer. What has been decided is to um, impose on the automotive industry electrification that brings 50% additional cost against it, a conventional vehicle. So we have to digest 50% of additional cost. There is no way we can transfer 50% of additional cost to the final consumer because most part of the middle classes will not be able to pay for those new car sales. So we lose the customer, we lose the customer base, and then we have to shrink the company, which is going to create, of course, social issues. Just saying. The standard Hurricane has 20 more horsepower and 60 foot-pounds of torque more than the 57 e Torque Hemi that's found in the regular Wagoneer. Looking over Slander's press release, I find it interesting that this version actually has a recommendation of using premium fuel. While this engine will work on a lower grade fuel such as 87 or 89 octane, will it actually get the 15% better performance Solantis is claiming? Ford recommends premium fuel for the twin turbo 3.5 liter EcoBoost, and then I found this article from Car and Driver where the dyno tested the engine to see the differences between 93 octane and 87. I wish it was 91 octane that they tested with, but you can clearly see across the board a drop in all the numbers, and how much do you want to bet that the Hurricane numbers that Jeep has posted is based off the recommended fuel. The high output Hurricane engine or Hurricane 510 as they're calling it, you don't have to worry about performance loss because Solanus already requires the use of premium fuel for its the 1 to 2 mile per hour game. So for the 5.7 versus standard Hurricane, I'm not going to say that it's better than the 5.7 because of the variable with the fuel. And I don't see a 15% improvement 
even if they are quoting their MPG numbers off 91 Octane. The best improvement game by the standard Hurricane versus the 5.7 E-Torque is 9% by getting an extra 2 miles per gallon on the highway in the four-wheel drive version. Every other game is right in the 5% range. So leaving the tuning possibility aside, I know some people are going to say the 5.7 versus standard Hurricane will be a toss-up of what you prefer. You have about the same performance, around the same fuel economy, and it just depends whether or not you want the Hemi sound or do you want your scat pack to sound like a Honda? Just saying. The high output version is the same way. We get new MPG numbers that are barely over 5% compared to the 392. Sure, the high output Hurricane outperforms the 6.4 with 40 more horsepower and 50 more foot pounds of torque, but I can get one MPG by changing my driver habits and I can make up for the power difference with some bolt-ons and possibly a tune. I'll put on the screen the differences between the Hurricane engines. The standard Hurricane has a higher compression ratio, cast not forged aluminum pistons, and don't get the same coating technology that how output version gets in order to minimize friction and wear. Also, another problem is the new Hurricanes are also direct injected. There is a lot of hype around direct injection, but there are some drawbacks to it. If you look at this article by Consumer Reports, Companies can use smaller turbocharged engines to get these extra claims of efficiency, but it comes at a price. Ford learned this lesson the hard way and updated their 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine because one of the problems with direct injection is carbon buildup behind the intake valves. With direct injection, fuel is sprayed directly into the cylinder and not in the port like on past engine designs like the Hemi for example, so there is nothing cleaning the back of the valves and after a while, you start having performance issues. In 2017, Ford updated their 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine with a dual fuel injection system. In each cylinder, you have one injector spraying into the cylinder, then you have a second one that'll spray in the intake port to quote, work together to improve power output, efficiency, and emissions. Sounds like a PC answer to me to fix an inherent design flaw with direct injection by spraying fuel behind the intake valves to prevent carbon buildup. Just saying. Whether or not the new Hurricanes have this problem will be a question. Ford had to change the design of their EcoBoost over the years to address various issues with the cheaply manufactured engines. I've even had a 2017 Ford Fusion with a 2 liter EcoBoost that needed a replacement block just after 4 years because of a design flaw letting coolant into the cylinders. And that 2 liter that was in that Fusion was actually the second version of the engine that had the flaw. And Ford had to put a TSB out to replace the block of a lot of vehicles. So the question is, did Chrysler, before Stellantis showed up, take any notes from Ford when they had these issues with their EcoBoosts when they designed the Hurricanes? I noticed on the press release that the standard Hurricane has a single fuel pump and the high output version has a dual fuel pump system. So maybe this secondary fuel system fixes the same issue that Ford found, or maybe it's just there to crank up the power like Ford did with a 660 horsepower 4 GT EcoBoost engine. I'm just going to say that the jury is still out with these Hurricanes. I don't see any major advantage going with them over the Hemi. I'll just say it comes down to the preference do you want the V8 sound or not. A lot of people left all these other companies because they wanted a V8 sound. You go with a Hemi, you still gonna get around the same amount of performance, still around the same amount of MPG, but you're gonna have a way better sounding vehicle. You go with a Hurricane route, then you really don't care what your vehicle sounds like. But I would suggest with this direct adjusting engine to go get you a catch cam. And you go check out my buddies that just bolt on to get you a catch cam for whenever these engines come out. I'll leave a link down in the description for their website. But getting a good quality catch cam is going to help catch all that extra oil and carbon buildup behind those intake valves. But just look at Ford. All these years with the powerful EcoBoost and Ford's lineup, and V8s are still popular in the F 150s. All these years turning the EcoBoost. And no one cares. 
I just wish these American companies would apply the same amount of effort that they did to the EcoBoost and the Hurricane engines to make the V8s better and more efficient. Just look at Mercedes-Benz, Chrysler's old sugar daddy, they make a 4 liter bi-turbo engine that makes over 700 horsepower. So why not make a smaller displacement Hellcat V8 with all the technology improvements over the last several years? Look at Chevy with the Corvette. A base V8 Corvette can slay just about anything on the road now. The Z06 Corvette that's gotten thousands thousands of orders, even though all the dealers want to add 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on top of the price. All these people are lining up for V8s. I don't see people lining up for the next great six cylinder engine. Just saying. So let me know what you guys think. Hurricane over Hemi, because pretty soon these engines will be in everything and the Hemi will be gone. Don't believe me? Look at the end of the press release and these will be the primary ICE engines, not the Pentastar or the 57 Hemi, and still a large and still a frame platform. So like I said in my other video, all V8s are dead and living on borrowed time. Once the performance figures move to the next platform, the Hemi will not be the top of the food chain. And you can find out about the performance hybrids that I'll sit at the top in this video right here.